Hey everybody, I'm Adam. And I'm Jay. We are Encounter Wargaming. And we wanted to celebrate hitting our 1,500 subscribers with giving some stuff away. What are we giving away, Adam? Fort Bang! Yeah. Alright, we're calling this the 2,500 subscriber Forge Bang giveaway because that's the target we need to hit to give this puppy away. That's right. So the first thing you need to do is share this video, the video you are watching right now. And then click subscribe on YouTube. If you haven't already. That's it for one entry. And the more you share it, hopefully, the more people we can get to hit subscribe and hit that 2,500. Woohoo! But there are other ways to win as well. Tell them about it. Well, you can follow us on Twitch. That will also get you an entry. So you subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Twitch. On top of that, support us on Patreon for five big buckaroo entries. Crazy. So also all the people that already support us on Patreon, don't worry, you're also five entries. But also, you can hit subscribe on Twitch. Subscribing on Twitch will get you another five entries into the contest. So good. And all of this to say thank you guys for all the support. We appreciate it very much. We've come a long way, and it's because of you. It's true. It's been a wild ride, and thanks for all the support, all the help. And we want to give, a, give you some cool stuff as a thank you. Awesome. So, hey, remember to share this video. And, uh, guys, I think that's it. So, we'll see you at our next encounter. encounter Wargaming. I'm Jay, and today we're going to be building some badass bunkers. Check out these cool terrain pieces to add to our grass table out of just some basic plastic bulk food containers. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to start with my plastic containers and some foam core, and all I'm doing is just laying them down where I think I want the piece to look like, tracing it out and cutting it out with a sharp X-Acto blade. Not really all that much to it, but make sure to bevel the edges while you're at it. And of course I'm going to do that for both pieces. Then I'm just going to take my glue gun and glue them down onto my uh, base, I suppose if you want to call it that, or template. And I'm just taking the glue gun and I go around the outside after it's glued down as sort of like a caulking in a way. Now I'm measuring out for the bridge. I'm going to cut just a small piece of foam core to be the bridge and of course um, hot glue that on. The same way I glued them to the template. This will provide structure as well as give the terrain piece a nice detail, I suppose. And make it possible for figures to actually look like they can walk from one side to the other. And then I'm just taking popsicle sticks and I've measured the width of the bridge and I'm just cutting them to size so that I can basically just lay them down on top and create sort of a wooden overpass, if you will. And that's just simply a matter of taking your hot glue and gluing them down. Just that simple, as you can see. I'm also going to make pieces for the sides and I just do that by measuring out a popsicle stick. Basically, in this case, just cutting off the circular edges because, of course, it pretty much worked out perfectly and I even didn't intend it to be that way but it's great when things work out like that and then all I'm gonna do is just take other pieces of popsicle sticks and cut them into one inch lengths and I've decided to use that as my windows so I'm just gonna find areas where I think the windows should go and just hot glue them on the same way I hot glued on the bridge and the base not really all that complicated now I'm just gonna go and grab a bunch of bits out of my bits box Things that I think will like just mech it up a bit, make it look all techy and stuff. I've added some hatches to the roofs as obviously ways to get in and out of the buildings or onto said roofs to warrant said bridge. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just any other antennas or little console type things. Um, and I actually attach them with crazy glue as opposed to hot glue. So now I've decided to add some tree details. And that's just a matter of taking some sticks the same way I've done in most of the past tutorials, even the ones in this playlist and just breaking links that I think will be, you know, sort of tree height and just putting a massive glob of hot glue at the very base. Now you gotta be patient with this guys because the glue does take a while to dry, but once it's dry, it's pretty much as hard as rubber and so will hold them in place quite well. Especially if you build up the glue around the base of the trees, uh, it'll create sort of a bottom for it. And now I'm just basically taking some of that really annoying white foam that comes in almost every package for every appliance you ever buy. I've used it before. It's super easy to just break up into little tiny pieces and then I just hot glue them all over the place. So that once I spackle and sand this, they'll look like awesome rock formations that are made of absolutely free materials. So now I'm just going to take little tiny sticks. Um, 
and basically pin drill into the side of the branch, putting in a little piece of paper clip and then drilling up the center of the branch and crazy gluing them in place. Now I want to soak the joint as well between the trunk and the branches with crazy glue and then uh, afterwards you want to give them a nice coat of white glue. So now I'm going to, now that the white glue is dry, I'm basically going to take my spackle and just spackle all the corners, the corners leading up to the bunker itself from the base of the terrain, as well as completely cover the white foam in spackle. In fact, I've even decided to cover the black uh, foam core as well in spackle, just to create a nice hard shell, because foam core does have a tendency to warp, especially when you throw down PVA glue and water. Um, and I want to avoid that as much as possible. Now there will be a little bit of warping with the spackle, but not nearly as much. And I can kind of counter it before I lay down my white glue uh, to put my sand on. And then of course also I'm doing the roofs just because every other terrain piece in our grass table, I put sand on the roofs to make it look like it's been overgrown and stuff. So I'm just covering them in the spackle to create an uneven surface so that I can lay down my PVA glue and sand basically. And this is the stage where you just go around and throw PVA glue pretty much everywhere except for obviously the sticks, the exposed parts of the sticks, and the uh, shiny plastic that makes the bunker. I obviously only want the sand where there is going to be dirt, so that would be the base of the piece pretty much everywhere I've spackled to make things simple, to make the explanation simple. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, just going around doing that on both pieces, again, making sure not to get too much onto the trees and onto the building. If you do get a little bit, it's okay. It's dirt, right? It gets all over the freaking place. But uh, for the most part, you want to make sure you leave the clear plastic smooth, as smooth as possible, so that it'll look like metal when we're done painting it. And of course, you don't want dirt all over the trees. You want to see that nice sort of wood grain that's naturally built into the sticks. I'd probably tear you to pawns on the garbage on display for your celebration day. I'm the black twin with your stars. I'm the black between. So now that my sand is all dry, I'm just going to completely cover these guys in a rust oleum, so rust paint. Uh, I've chosen espresso, you can choose any dark brown, any kind of burnt umber sort of equivalent. I like to use rust paint because it'll stick to pretty much anything. Plastic, glass, wood, ceramic, it doesn't matter. You can paint on pretty much anything with rust paint. And it's durable as hell. So it not only, like I say, will add a nice protective coat to the entire terrain piece, but it'll also hold in the sand and it creates a nice brown base for all of the colors we're going to put on this because obviously we want to tie everything together, we want it to look dirty, we want it to look worn, we want it to look like a battlefield, right? So brown is always the first place I start with pretty much any terrain piece, and these pieces are no different. Um, I like to get a good coat on there. Sometimes you need two coats, especially like on the clear plastic that I'm using in this case. Um, you'll find that it'll get very streaky, and what you can even do is kind of stab the plastic rather than like brush against it to kind of help it stick a little bit more and like I say it's just a matter of covering every inch of these things with brown paint Now that my paint's dry, I'm going to take my Silver Morning, just a basic silver paint from I got at the dollar store, and paint all of the areas I want metal, the color of metal. Getting a nice thick coat, again, some, you might need two, especially on the shiny plastic. And uh, yep, there I am doing my second coat of silver. Cool. Now I'm just going to soak these guys once the silver is dry in a, what I call a terrain wash. It's basically just uh, some cinnamon brown paint and water. 
about a third paint, two thirds of water. Now it will run off a lot, and so as you see here, I've gone around them a second, even a third time, and uh, that way it just ensures that it's good. And then I go around them again, just the lower half of it, with a emerald green and water. And basically that just creates sort of like a, I suppose, mold around the bottom that's been caused from water damage. And then once those are dry, just go around and dry brush all of the metal sort of back up to that original metal color without going too heavy, of course, because you still want to see the washes through. And as you can see, it just kind of faded them together a bit. So they didn't look, you know, too drastic. Um, I don't want them to look too much like water drops, but I do want it to look like the metal has aged. So now I'm just going to throw a base coat on my trees, and I've just chosen for that some cinnamon brown. Nothing major. Uh, also, any of the wood parts. So you can see here the windows, the bridge, uh, all that kind of stuff. Anything I want wood, I'm going to paint the cinnamon brown. Change. I take one to cool down and one to wake up. One for the madness, but one is not enough. There's something up ahead, maybe an exit out of this place. Well, that the missiles misfire. And then once all the wood areas are painted, I'm just going to go over it again with a black terrain wash this time. Again, just black paint and water, about a third paint, two thirds water. And it'll just create a nice. Uh, definition between all of the wood grain in both the popsicle sticks and the trees and show off all the nice little bumps and stuff that are all over the sticks that I used as trees and again you can't duplicate nature as well as nature actually can and then I'm just throwing some black paint in the holes of the uh, hatches that I put on the top as well and then I'm just going to go around and paint all of the wood areas now with a the original cinnamon brown, but just do like sort of a light dry brush of it. Actually more of a heavy dry brush, I suppose, because we're going to do a final dry brush after we're done a bunch of the other colors. But right now I just want to sort of do sort of a heavy dry brush. And now I'm going to take my espresso again and just touch up all of the areas of the dirt where I got silver. I'm not too worried where I got the other brown on the dark brown. That's totally fine. But anywhere I got silver on the dark brown, I want to just touch up. Because I don't want to leave that. Of course, it doesn't look as weird when you have dirt on the metal. But when you have metal dirt, it looks kind of ridiculous. So you want to make sure you just go around and touch everything up. Now that I've done that, I'm just going to do a very heavy dry brush of uh, basically a dark gray, so I suppose like um, Dawnstone, what Citadel would call Dawnstone, but of course I'm using an artist acrylic, not uh, Citadel paints because that would just be ridiculous. Way too expensive. And then I'm just going to go around and do a heavy dry brush as well on all of the dirt areas, all of the areas I want it to be like brown dirt, and that just creates uh, a differentiation, I suppose I want to say, between what I've decided to be rock faces, what parts of the sand are supposed to be rock faces, as well as what parts of the sand I want to keep as actual soil. And of course I'm going to do that on the roofs as well, right? Basically anywhere there's dirt. Um, and this color is called the yellow oxide, sorry, I didn't mention the name of the color. Wrong in her entire life, we made it her wrong. Now that all of that is done, I'm just going to go around and paint the entire terrain piece with uh, sort of like a bleach bone. This particular color I'm using is actually called unbleached titanium, but it's, you know, the equivalent of what Citadel used to call a bleach bone, or a shopty bone. And of course I'm going to do the wood, I'm going to do the dirt, and I'm going to do the trees, the rocks, everything is going to get this dry brush, with the exception, of course, of the silver. So everything but the silver. And again, don't be upset if you get a little bit of this dry brush onto the silver, because it's going to look totally fine. If you had gotten some of the silver onto the dirt, if you'd done that last, it would have looked horrible. So this is sort of the final shade that will sort of give everything its final definition and shading and tie all of the colors together. And now I'm just going to go around and touch up around the windows, of course, where too much of my dry brush came onto the silver, just with a thin sort of watered down layer of the silver. And then back to PVA glue. I'm just going to go everywhere I think static grass should go. Paint on my PVA glue and sprinkle static grass all over this. And I like to add a lot of static grass. I'm the kind of guy who believes that if there's grass, there's going to be a lot of it, not just small patches everywhere. I think that looks kind of silly sometimes. I mean, obviously in the right circumstance, it's great. But in most of my terrain pieces, especially if I'm doing like a grassy plains, which is the case of our trash to treasure table, in this entire series, um, I like to use a heavy amount of static grass. 
just to really show that nature has taken over these various buildings that I'm building for this table. As coincidences. If you haven't yet, after this video is over, please go back and check out the other Trash to Treasure videos. Uh, trust me, they're worth it, and I'm just using crappy materials like these to make awesome terrain pieces. So I hope those of you who have been following along have enjoyed this series so far. And don't worry guys, there's a whole bunch more trash to treasure terrain to come. But for now, this is our bunkers. So now I'm going to add my clump foliage, and basically that's just some PVA glue uh, around the areas of the tree where I want the clump foliage, and literally clump it on. Like just press it in with your fingers. It's going to fall off, especially when it gets wet with the glue, um, so be patient. I'm just taking some moss, as I've done in the past uh, videos in this series and just having it grow up the walls as vines. And that's just a matter, again, just like the clump foliage, of painting on PVA and sticking it on. And then once our clump foliage and our moss is dry, I'm just gonna take some PVA glue, just get it nice and soaked in water, like maybe, not even half and half, like maybe, again, a third glue and two thirds water and just go around and soak all of the clump foliage as well as the moss with the PVA water mixture. And uh, it will drip all over the place guys, it will get all over the base, especially on the trees, it'll start to run down the branches and stuff. I mean you can't really prevent it, so you just need to go around as you do it and sort of sop up a lot of the glue um, that lands on the base of the terrain piece. You want it to sort of stay on the places you want it to be. If a little bit gets here, a little bit gets there, it doesn't really matter because it dries clear, but it just seals everything in nicely and creates a nice finish to make it hard and durable. And that's all there is to it, guys. And there's our finished pieces. I mean, I just wanted to show them to you guys when they were fully dry, fully hardened, everything's good. And uh, as you can see, they turned out quite beautifully. So like I say, that PVA glue just sort of adds a nice protective coat to the clump foliage, making it basically hard to the touch, as well as to the moss, as you can see here, which just looks nice like vines now. And like I say, some of it dripped off into the bottom and stuff. I sopped up what I could with a paper towel, but where it, where I didn't and it hardened, it's totally fine because it dried clear. And everything looks great, right? Let's give you guys a nice good pan of these terrain pieces. I think they turned out awesome for something that costs next to nothing. I mean, it's sticks, it's white styrofoam, and leftover bulk food containers. The only uh, stuff you really have to buy is some foam core, which you can get in any art store, as well as, of course, all the paints, glue, and sand. I hope you all enjoyed that tutorial. That was a lot of fun for me. Uh, this was one of the lo longer terrain projects out of all the stuff that I've built for in our Trash to Treasure Terrain series. And again, the point of this series is just sort of to use inexpensive materials to make awesome terrain uh, very easily and quickly. So that's kind of the situation that I was hoping to present to you guys. Super fun to build and they're going to make an awesome addition to our grass table for future battle reports as well as our Twitch streams. Uh, so if you haven't yet, Check us out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash encounterwargaming. We do regular streams uh, at least a couple of times a week. Follow us there uh, and subscribe if you can. It helps us out with a little bit of cash. Also, right now, as you guys saw in our ad, we're doing a Forge Band giveaway to our subscribers. So if you're watching this on YouTube, of course you are, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and it will give you an entry into our Forge Band giveaway. So for subscribing to our YouTube channel, you get an entry. For following us on Twitch, you get an entry. If you subscribe to us on Twitch, you get five entries. And there's another way to get another five entries, and that is our Patreon campaign. So head to the description below, check out the Patreon link, and for as little as a dollar a video, it goes a long way to help us here, and it gets you a whole bunch more extra bonuses. Otherwise, just hit subscribe, hit like, hopefully you will win a Forge Bane in the coming months, and we will see you at our next encounter.